Hello. So to the gentle, soothing sound of the washing machine and the neighbours in the garden, I thought I would demonstrate an, an ink and wash interior. So we're in the kitchen, looking against the window. Um, I'm going to start with the wash. So the wash, I've been doing this in previous videos, wash is just dilute ink. So I've got a little tray of black ink, which I've diluted fairly generously because this ink is incredibly strong. And I've just a broken off bit of sponge. And it's quite exciting drawing like this because especially if you do it this way, you could draw out pencil lines, get everything planned out. But I would say the thing with ink is to just go for it and uh, enjoy the fact that it can't be rubbed out and you'll just have to be more decisive and feel quite liberated. So let's start with, we'll start with the black fish jug here, which is here, there, I think maybe a bit higher. And I've got a cup down there. So I haven't tidied up anything here and therefore I'll have to tidy it up in my drawing. So I'll leave certain things out, but I did want to get as far as the um, jar with the flowers in it. Yeah. They're going to be there. And then I think I've got the top of the table about there. And I have a chair over here. And then that's where the window is. So I've chosen a view where I'm looking into the light, contre jour, and it means then that I've got some nice contrast. The window is open, so I'll take a little bit more wash to get the base of the window. Try not to let it run. You don't have to do that. I'm having to hold it up so you can see, but you can do yours flat. And we've got a basil plant on the window there. So I'm starting with the wash using a sponge, which is a good way of just drawing loosely. It's dilute ink and it's a single strength, which again is quite helpful for decisiveness. I look with my eyes half closed, although often if you sit and look towards the window, um, you're instantly given a, a clear pattern of light and dark. But when you look with your eyes half closed, it helps you to see a simple pattern of light and shade. And that's where that bit of the window is, with uh, a plate up there. So I'm putting down a pattern of tone Eyes half closed to help me sort out what's light and dark and it's single strength so I can't get too fussy about gradations of light and shade. We've got all these pictures and postcards. There's a photograph there and a little framed picture up there. So having got most of those mid-tone shapes down, uh, I've still got a little bit of wash left on the sponge. And what I'd quite like to do actually is anything that isn't like parts of the table here with what's left over. Just want to get rid of some of that white paper. And the wall isn't quite so bright there. So that's the starting point. Working with the sponge and the wash, you can keep going back as you see things are a little bit darker. But as I say, the idea of it really is to force you to choose what's light and what's dark. And then when you let that dry, which I'm going to do, or I'm gonna take off a, a new drawing underneath, um, then you can take your stick and your line and start to introduce some definition. Um, the other thing I was thinking of doing as well, which I think I did in the other one, We've got a bit of a view of the mountain up there. I think I've got too much wash on there, so I didn't really want that to be quite so dark. 
I'll come back to this one. Though. I'm going to work on a different one, but I'll show you what you can do if you went too far, as I just did. So that's putting down the wash first and buried under here. Here's another version. Oops, upside down. Let's put that there where you can see it. And now I'm going to draw on top of this with the undiluted ink. So I've got a pot of undiluted ink and I've got a sharpened stick, which is a bit of willow, just been sharpened. You can use the end of a paintbrush or and rather like drawing with the sponge, it's just quite nice to have something that makes you just a bit more inventive. If you draw with a, a pen, I find firstly that pens snag a bit, then the nibs easily get damaged. Uh, and then you can also feel that, oh, there's only one way to draw with a pen, I have to learn how to draw with a pen. Whereas with a stick, how absurd is that to draw with a sharp but a stick? So you'll just draw much more freely. So that's our fish jug. Uh, then I've got the ellipse of a mug down here. And what I should stress is that I put down the shapes with the wash and sponge fairly loosely. And now I'm hopefully redrawing. So if I discover that things aren't exactly the shape that my sponge and wash created, then I'll feel quite happy about redrawing them, redefining them. But you probably find that because things work quite well as these dark shapes against the light window, you may not do quite as much redrawing and redefining as you first thought. And it's certainly a good, good approach for making you simplify and leaving, leave things out. So be aware of what you define when you put in these lines and now and then stop and take stock. And if you think, well, actually, I don't have to do much to all this bunch of flowers and stems or um, something like that. You know, if you discover that something is already sufficiently well described, then leave it be. Less is more, and all that sort of thing. Um, so there's the plate on the table, and I think I probably will put in the table edge again. And it's probably good to have it behind these objects. And I would guess in a way that as you go further back in your picture, you'll probably find that there is less need to define. I'll do a bit to that chair because I think it's quite good to have some something at a different angle. And I've got a chair over here as well, behind everything, which is probably quite good. When you have objects behind, and they appear in the spaces in between. And that will help add some depth. And as I say, as I get further back, there's maybe less net need to define. I think I certainly want to define the basil pot in the window. I might have done too much defining of the flowers. So I think with the basil pot, I won't be too... I'll get much in there. I've got a line on the window. So you see how it gradually develops. And again, you can look with your eyes half closed. If certain lines remain in your view, then you can think, well, that's worth defining. And if other things disappear when you look with your eyes half closed, well then, don't bother with them. So in a moment I'm going to pause this because I want that to dry and I'll just show you what else you can do uh, which would be to go back to some wash or try some chalk and see what else uh, needs defining. But I can see more to my cup here. So I think I'll do a little bit more pattern 
on the cup to make that stand forward. That looks a bit vague. Maybe I need to get something at the edge of the picture there. And I'm a bit undecided about what's out the window. So let's see. I'll pause a moment while I let that dry for the chalk to be done. So now that that's dry, and that's a, a point worth making that I've separated the wash. I let that dry. I started this second drawing. Um, let the wash dry, then put the line on, uh, and I've let the line dry. So now I've got some chalk. So I think there are certain places, for example, this uh, bunch of flowers here, I'd quite like to get some of the light gaps between them. So it's quite nice to put some chalk back on. Uh, that glass jar has got lots of light shining through it. So there are places where I can just add a bit of light on the handle of this fish jug on the top of the cup. And often you find what's quite nice is that the, the wash, top of the chair, the wash um, gives the paper a bit of a tooth so you can get quite a nice line, often you get a, a nice broken line. I've got slightly um, rough watercolour paper here, so that also will give you quite a nice textured mark to, to the chalk. So it's not just about correcting, <clears throat> it can also be out about adding a new layer of, of depth, of light. So again, use it selectively. Don't obsessively try and tidy up. Just see what what can you add some more interest to the drawing with. You know, where where is their light shapes that will help you see through objects or um, enhance the the contrast. And by the same token, I mean I'm really unhappy with my mountain out there. You can also try charcoal. And the nice thing about charcoal is having been decisive with your, um, your ink and your wash, you can now actually be a bit more subtle with your charcoal. Uh, so I wanted to get in a bit of the mountain over there. It's just giving me a gray. Maybe I want to get a bit more gray over here so that the inside is a little bit darker. And maybe if I wanted to grade some of my tones in the window or the room. Again, as I've said, the, the sort of tooth that you get on the surface of the paper from, from the wash is quite nice for putting on charcoal, so I can get some really black charcoal in certain places. So I think it's quite a good process that you start off being fairly decisive, and then you can refine some of these decisive effects in a much sort of softer way with the charcoal and the chalk. But if you find you're getting too careful, well then get back into the ink, go back to being bolder. I think that's what you get from ink. You get a more decisive, bolder quality. And you get a drawing that will often surprise you. And this is very important, that your, your drawing um, interests you. And you're not always in control of everything that happens. So, there we go. There's some ink and wash working on an interior. So this is the last of the 14 days uh, videos that I'm doing for adults. Um, but I'm going to now start doing some weekly drawing projects for adults. I'd mentioned yesterday weekly art projects for children, which begin this week. And there's information about them on my website. 
and the weekly drawing projects for adults I'll start next week. So I'll send out some information about that, but it will be basically um, an introductory demonstration video like these, and then a chance to have some feedback and support, one-to-one -one support from me about these drawing projects. So you can send me through email or WhatsApp photographs of how your drawing's progressing. I'll have given you some step-by-step -step guidance and then you can work away on them during the course of the week. And um, we'll have a bit of a coming together at the end of the, the, the week to see the work that the group has done. It's quite nice to see how other people have tackled a particular project. Um, and I'll give some, some feedback at, in that concluding session. So anyway, I'll, I'll let you know more about those. And uh, thank you for joining in. Bye-bye.